Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your Atharva Rao. So I'm back again with some very interesting topic today. Done my research and got my points set and hope you like this video and this is going to be super helpful for you guys in making your decisions. So before we start, as I always tell, if you are new to this channel, thanks for coming this far. Go down, hit the subscribe button. That means the world to me and if you are a visiting person who has been here before, Thanks for all the love and love you guys. Thanks to you that we are motivated to do what we're doing right now. So let's dive right into the topic. And today's topic for the day is MBA in India versus MBA abroad. So this is a very relevant topic. And this is a question which comes in every aspirant, seeing people around them going abroad, seeing people around them in top colleges like IIMs, and seeing some friends doing an MBA in India parents and the students of often think what is successful for them and what is going to be a good decision to make and what will give them the best returns so let us cut straight into the chase and decode these two options and see what are the things that has in place for offer offering us but again before i start the disclaimer is my job here is to just do my research to tell my opinions so new to take it or leave it but ultimate decision maker is you here I'm not trying to tell what to do or what is good or what is wrong. Just putting facts, putting my opinions, putting my research here. And it's new to make out of it or break out of it. So let's get started. So before I speak on the points which I've researched on, what I would like to tell you guys is one thing you have to note down. One thing you have to note down that if a college is forcefully calling you, if a college is forcefully calling you 10 times, 100 times a day, dropping 1000 spam emails, begging you to join that college, don't join that college. That college doesn't deserve you. You don't deserve that college. And that is not going to help you in any way. It should be other way around. You should be begging the college, please take me. Please take me. I will be a good fit. I will build the brand of your college. I will take your college's name even further. That's, that's how it should be. Of course, you don't have I am Ahmedabad, I am Bangalore of the world calling you and begging you to join them. Rather, it's we students who beg them to take us. Even after getting 99.9 percentile, we are not guaranteed a seat there. That's the competition and that's the level of that college. So let's aim at that level. With that note, I would like to start. So MBA in abroad, there are three routes. One route is your GMAT GRE route through an entrance exam and this is one of the best routes and this is the route I suggest you guys to take because this gives you entry to top top global B schools like um, NYU Stern, then um, Wharton, your LBS London Business School, your uh, your other top institutes, your top B schools of the world, name it, it's their Harvard Business School example. but. Another route is going through consultancy or going through a mere TOEFL or uh, IELTS. And this is a little not so suggested unless you, you have money, uh, you're just going there to chill, to relax, to have an experience of going abroad and just having a good time, you can do it. But if you're going with that pressure of taking a loan and repaying that loan and getting a job there, then I wouldn't suggest because I have many friends who have come back who have gone to London did in not so famous colleges because you have a college in every gully nowadays so they have done in not so famous colleges come back here without any returns and they're looking for jobs in my ex company Deutsche Bank also I've seen many people who have come back from an MBA in London without a job there visa getting expired and here they are working in back office for a mere 4 lakh 5 lakh package which is not that good it's not worth it so please make sure you know what you want and you're sure to take the return so considering that let's look at the points for mba abroad so global placement opportunities across diverse industries so of course you're doing it abroad and you're going to get global opportunities to work in global mncs top forms of the world and make a name for yourself extensive international alumni network for global career advancement so you are all in to very 
sophisticated alumni networks because you have people supporting you who have gone from India or gone from your state who tend to huddle up together and stick on together and do betterment for their people. So that alumni network will definitely help you once you're in a foreign land. Then you have dedicated career services and job search support. So you have, although you don't have campus college placements the way you have in India, you will have specific career uh, campus, I mean career services companies, you have job fairs, you have uh, job networking sessions, meetups, which is definitely going to help you to get jobs and your alumni, your network is your net worth. So this is another point to consider. Then the brand recognition and prestige of the international base schools. So of course the brand name is going to go a long way. And you tell anyone you are from Harvard Business School, anyone will have a jaw drop and will do a salam to you. So they will definitely look upon you and it's a great tag to have beside your name. And then you have the exposure to global business practices and innovation hubs. So of course, since you're doing it there and you have that access to that global faculty and that global exposure, you are introduced to a state of the art modern resources, which helps you equip your MBA journey better. And then you have the language proficiency enhancement. So what happens is if you're going to do an MBA in say another country, a non-English speaking country like France, Germany, Spain, etc. So you tend to learn French, German and Spanish, which is of course going to help you sustain better. It gives you another added advantage because knowing more languages makes you more versatile and more powerful in that place and more self-sustainant and more independent. So that's definitely going to help you in a journey and crack jobs better. Then the access to cutting edge research and technology. So this is definitely going to make a difference because you have all the modern technology, you name it, you'll get it there. You have AI coming up these days. You have all the things you would need to is make your life better. And then the cultural immersion, personal growth opportunities. So you carrying a culture from India, when it integrates against the culture of that place, that merge you into a different person and paves way for much more opportunities for you and then networking events and conferences attracting global recruiters so these kind of events makes you get a platform to showcase yourself and you are then attracted and hired by top recruiters and finally a post-study visa work visa options for international career prospects so you are given a certain visa where you have to work you can you are allowed to work in that period and if you do exemplary and if a company wants to sponsor you they will sponsor your permanent residence and you eventually become a pr of that country so it's a beautiful way to settle abroad all in all and live your dream life and of course these are the points and uh, we coming from India, of course, uh, since childhood, definitely it's been in our mind that going abroad is a rosy picture in our head. But don't keep that rosy picture totally because it's going to be a struggle. You will have to go there and do part time. You will have to hustle. You will have to work on your profile yourself. You'll have to work on your other skills. You'll have to do the chores. You won't have your parents to help you with cooking and cleaning the house. You will have to strive, struggle, earn, work hard and achieve your goals. And you are going to be your own motivation force to drive yourself ahead there so it's going to be a hustle it's not as rosy as you think but i understand we coming from india coming from middle class families we all have that aspiration and dream to go abroad and there's nothing wrong to plan out and execute a very organized way to go abroad and become successful so definitely a good option the next the elephant in the house mba in india mera bharat mahan so keeping all the sassiness outside MBA in India, another good choice to option to a uh, good option to consider. But again, main thing, write an entrance exam and join only a college if you're getting a good mark out of that entrance exam and join the college where the, you want the college and not the college wants you. You don't have to join the college where the college is begging you to join them, as I told in the start of the video. So and register for all the entrance exam, CAT, XAT, SNAP, NMAT, GMAT, GRE and you have ample number of top B schools in India accepting this course and any of these colleges you're going to do good based on the percentile or marks you get. So the benefits of MBA in India, let's decode that. Placement assistance within the Indian job market. So you have placement committees set up by the college, run by students or run by college who facilitate placements, who bring campus placements, who bring companies on campus and get you placed for summers as well as final by giving you a PPO or giving you a final offer and uh, 
most of these top B schools show 100 uh, play, uh, percent placements and average placements of top B schools in India, let's be straight, 20 to 35 lakhs and life is beautiful. Next point, strong alumni networks and industry connections in India. So top B schools in India, the alumni tend to stick together. And when will this be helpful? This will be helpful in tough times and tough econo economic situations and in times of recession. So alumni of IIM Ahmedabad tend to come back to their college and do good for their current students. Uh, alumni of XLRIs come and do good for their institution. SPJ and they come back. They all have the gratitude towards their college for making them big in life and they come back to give it back to the society and the college. The next point is sector specific expertise tailored to Indian industries. So you have sector specific specific to Indian market which will help you. So you have examples is you have agricultural business management in IIM Ahmedabad and Lucknow. Then you have sustainable business management and operations management specific specialization in IIM Mumbai. Then you have uh, SPJ in offering specializations even before you join the B school. You have many top colleges giving you specific MBAs in BKFSI which is banking and financial industries. Then you have specific MBAs in marketing, specific MBAs in technology management these days and the list goes on. So definitely doing an MBA in your niche is going to be helpful for you to get your dream job in that domain. The next is the government recognition and accreditation of programs. So you have government bodies like your NAC, AICT accrediting and recognizing these MBA colleges and of course your Indian Institute of Management needless to say has the Indian word with it attached with it and it's it's formed out of an act by the government of India so making it prestigious it's an in, in it's an institution of national importance as they call it then the understanding of business environment Indian business environment and culture so you are involved in a very deep di di driven and um, very case study based oriented uh, pedagogy where you're into the Indian market you study the Indian market through case studies you are becoming well versed in the Indian market to serve the Indian market going ahead then the cost effective living expenses compared to studying abroad this is a very important point to consider because of course you going abroad even though you are spending in a different currency since Indian rupees is lower than that currency for example of euros or USDs you tend to mentally get that feeling that it's very expensive because even one dollar is going to come around about 80 rupees to you and it's going to have that mental toll on you but in India you're again spending with the same rupee you lived your entire life with so it's definitely not going to feel expensive it's rather going to be affordable to put it that way and then the internship opportunities would lead an in Indian company so you have all the top B companies coming on campuses and top B schools like you have MBBs for consulting, you have Pedalite, HUL, ITC for marketing, you have JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, you name it, it's there on campus. And these companies take you for summer placements, summer internships, and if you do good, you get a PPO, which is a pre placement offer. So it's a really good opportunity to secure a job and uh, seal your career. Then the regional specialization focusing on specific markets. So as I told you have specializations in specific markets which will make you grow in one particular niche vertically and make you become a king of that domain. And then the availability of government scholarships and financial assistance as I always tell. Marks love, bus, oi kaam hai tera. Your work is to bring the marks, government tells I will give you scholarship. You have colleges telling we will give you scholarships. You have philanthropists sitting outside who will give you scholarships. You have top conglomerates giving you scholarships. Your work, put the efforts, study, bring the marks. So you have government scholarships, you have specific scholarships need based for economically weaker sections of the society. You have women specific scholarships, you have merit based scholarships. You have top banks like SBI, S Bank giving scholarships. You have Aditya Birla Group scholarship which is very prestigious. So you name it the many, make a separate video on scholarships. So you can reduce your cost. So please work hard and bring the marks. Rest will be taken care by us is what the scenario tells. And then the rich cultural integration and the diversity within the Indian context. So doing an MBO makes you in India makes you very versatile and diversified in Indian context because think you're someone from Kerala and you're 
securing a seat in I am Shillong and you're going all the way to Northeast to do an MBA. Imagine you bringing that South Indian taste with a Northeast tinge to it. How versatile is your personality? And these cross-cultural experiences makes you a very good manager in future, makes you have that experience of dealing with different types of people, different stratas of people and taking viable, quantifiable and sustainable decisions as a manager, making you an overall great asset to the company. So these experiences are going to be extremely pivotal, pivotal for you in this. So to conclude, these were the points for MBA in India versus MBA abroad. But as I always tell, our job is to give you the facts, to give you the research. And it's on you to take the decision because you are the investment, you are the brand and you are doing an MBA for yourself. And you're going to do an MBA only once in your life. So you take the decision, read the facts and check what works best for you and then take the decision. And there is no right answer as to what is good or what is wrong. And once you choose the path, stick to that path because you may never get an opportunity again to know how old it will be if you chose another path. So you need to stick to what decision you take and strive towards getting towards your destination as I always tell. And uh, that's it from my side on this video. See you in the next video. Till then, love you guys. Keep focused, stay glued to the